Hello guys, in this video, we're going to learn timers and counters instructions. We'll start the video with a simple program to learn how a timer can be used. After that, different types of timers and also auxiliary relays, in another word, bit memories will be explained. In the same way, we'll learn how a counter can be used. Finally, in the next video, the project which was explained in the previous video, will be improved by timer and counter instructions. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content, we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, until now, we've learned these basic instructions. To add timer or counter instructions, we can use this icon. Now, I can find and insert timer, counter, and also other instructions. The timer instruction name is TMR. First, let's learn how this instruction can be used. As you can see, this instruction has two inputs. S1 and S2. First, we need to set a timer for the first input. Timer's name starts with the letter T, and a number starting from zero. The second input determines the desired time, when we want to do a certain task after that. For the first timer, T0, we have to enter the desired time in 100 milliseconds. For example, 10 seconds equals 100 by 100 milliseconds. So, I have to write the number 100, if I want 10 seconds. Now, the timer will start its work immediately, after the PLC goes to the run mode. Let's use a contact before that. Now, I will be able to enable or disable the timer, with the first digital input. Now, let's see some examples of using the T0 timer. First, I can use a normally open contact to turn on an output. Based on the program, if the first digital input is activated, and also the timer reaches 10 seconds to activate its coil, the virtual power will reach this output. So, PLC will turn on the first LED, after 10 seconds. Also, I can use a normally close contact to turn on an output. At this time, when the first digital input is enabled, PLC will turn on the second LED, but after 10 seconds, this contact will change its state to open. So, the second LED will be on, only when the timer is in timing mode to reaches 10 seconds. After that, the second LED will be off. As you know, normally open and close contacts have only two states. Open or close. Therefore, when we use T0 for these contacts, PLC automatically will use the timer mode to determine their state. The timer reaches its final time or not. But if we use another type of instructions like this one, which compares two values, PLC will use the current time of the selected timer. Well, based on the last line, if the first digital input is activated, and the current time of T0 timer is equal to or greater than 5 seconds, then PLC will turn on the third LED. Now, let me compile, and then download the program. Now, let me go to the online mode, to see the downloaded program on my PLC, and also use this mini switch, to run the Delta PLC. Ok, let's activate the first digital input. 
As you can see, the timer has started its work. After 5 seconds, PLC will turn on the third LED, and after 10 seconds, turn on the first LED, and turn off the second one. Let's test it again. Well, note that the timer must always be activated. Now, if I disable the first switch before 10 seconds, the timer will be stopped too. Ok, let's use the help menu, to explain some points related to PLC addresses, timers, and also counters, which will be explained later. In this window, you can find and read a brief description of PLC instructions, like the timer instruction, and also the counter instruction, but let me select the first item, device range. Here are several tables. Let me select my PLC series. Here is some useful information. For example, the selected control method for my PLC is cyclic scan system, and batch processing of inputs and outputs. It means that the PLC gathers all inputs, runs its program, and then updates all outputs. This cycle will continue until the PLC goes from run to stop mode. Note that, this cycle is called scan cycle. Now, pay attention to the bit contacts section. As you know, we use X and Y letters for external inputs and outputs, and the letter M, as auxiliary relay inside the PLC memory. Note that, there are three types of auxiliary relays inside the PLC memory. General, latched and special. The main difference between the general and latched group is related to when we disconnect the PLC power supply. If I disconnect my PLC power supply, these bit memories will lose their last state and will change to zero, but the second group doesn't lose their last state. Memory addresses of the last group are used for special tasks. For example, if this memory bit value changes to 1, then timers from 64 to 126, will work based on 10 milliseconds, instead of 100 milliseconds. Alright, now, let's see timer types. The T0 timer belongs to the first group. If you remember, I've entered 100 for the second input, S2, to define 10 seconds. Because 100 by 100 milliseconds, is equal to 10 seconds. Similarly, we can use other timer types, which work based on 10 and 1 millisecond. For example let me rewrite the previous program, using this timer, T127, which its time must be entered based on 1 milliseconds. Well, to rewrite the program, I need to change the selected timer and enter its time based on 1 milliseconds. Alright, the performance of this program is the same as the previous one. So, let me delete it and write another program to learn the counter instruction. Ok, again I can click on this icon, and then in this window, find the counter instruction. Its name is CNT. But let me show you another way, to find and insert an instruction. I can double click on the program, and then, inside this window, find the counter instruction. As you see, here are several categories. The counter and also timer instruction are inside this category. Basic instructions. Well, the counter instruction has two inputs, S1 and S2. Like the timer instruction. First let me select the first counter, C0. Then I must determine a number. Here are two choices. The first one is used to enter a number directly, and the second one, D, is used to refer to a location on the PLC memory, which stored the desired number. 
Let me select the first one and then write number 5. Alright, now let me write a simple program like the previous one. At this time, the counter will count pulses from the first push button, which is connected to the third digital input. After that, I will use a normally open and close contact of the inserted counter, to turn on the first two LEDs, and also I'll compare its value with a number, to turn the third LED. Note that, we can write our instructions directly. For example, the PLC command for a normally close contact is LDI, and a simple coil command is out. Now, let me double click on the last line of my program, and then, write instructions with their parameters. Ok, in the next network, I want to compare the counter value with number 3, like the timer program. Inside the last network, I want to use the second push button and a reset instruction, to change the counter value to zero. Now, based on the last network, when I press the second push button, PLC will change the counter value to zero. Now, let me compile and download the program. Well, this message says I cannot download the program, when the PLC is in run mode. Let me change it to stop mode, and then click on OK to download the program. Well, this message says do want to back to run mode. Alright, as you see, now, the counter value is not equal to number 5. So, the counter coil is not activated, and based on these networks, the first LED is off, and the second LED is on. Each time I press the first push button, the counter value will increase one unit. Well. Based on this network, PLC has turned on the third LED. Because the counter value is equal to, or greater than number 3. Now, the counter value has reached number 5. So PLC has changed the state of these contacts and turned on the first LED, and turned off the second LED. Note that, after this time, if I press the push button, the counter value won't change. Now, based on the last network, let's use the reset instruction to change the counter value to zero, and then test the counter again. Ok, let me back to the help window again. As you see, the first counter, C0, belongs to the first category. These counters use a word memory, 
in another word 16 bits, to save their values. They only count upwards. Each counter inside the second category uses 32 bits, and also can count upwards and downwards. To use these counters, the DCNT instruction can be used. It works like the CNT instruction. Note that, to determine the direction of counting, we must change a special memory. For example, if I want to use the C200 as a down counter, I must change this bit memory, M1200, from 0 to 1. Ok, the last category is useful, when we need to high speed in counting. Note that, each timer and counter uses a bit of memory to store its state, and also a word or double word of memory, to store its current time or value. So, if we use them for a contact which needs a bit of memory, the timer or counter state will be used, and if they use inside instructions like the used comparison, their current time or value will be used. Ok, in the next video, we'll see a simple example of using a down counter, and after that, we'll do a practical project using factory IO software. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.